sample instrument. Just to finish a quick snapshot of uh, what signal processing is about, as we saw uh, last time, um, signals live in three separate spaces simultaneously, right? Uh, the first uh, space is uh, the frequency domain space. Uh, and of course we are talking about uh, BL pi, namely all fine signals of finite energy whose bandwidth is plus minus pi. And in this space, signals are given by their frequency content. And this frequency content is uh, usually represented by its Fourier series. And as we saw last time, it just happens that uh, the values of the coefficients are just the values at integers, and of course the base functions are like this, and then of course you can change the variable and write this as sum k equals from minus infinity to infinity f of k e to the minus i k omega, right? So there is no time here. It's only what frequency content of the signal is. It just happens that the coefficients uh, of the Fourier series are just uh, the samples of the signal from the time domain. OK, then we have, so this is one domain. Then we have another domain, which is time domain. Where uh, time is continuous. Right? And there, uh, every signal f of t is again a Fourier series, but the base are not complex exponentials. The base are n goes from minus infinity to infinity, f at minus n, and then here is a sinc pi t plus n. And again, you can change the variables uh, of summation and write this as sum k equals from minus infinity to infinity f of k uh, sinc pi t minus k. Okay, so the same coefficients and the, uh, going from frequency domain to the time domain is by taking inverse uh, Fourier transform and of course going the other way around is just by uh, Fourier transform which is given by uh, f hat of omega is uh, integral from minus infinity to infinity uh, f of t e to the minus i omega t dt and the inverse would be f of t is equal 1 over 2 pi integral from minus pi to pi f hat of omega e to the i omega t t omega. So these are the 
uh, transformations. And lo and behold, these are the Fourier transform pairs. Uh, inverse Fourier transform of this guy is just the sink. Fourier transform of the sink is precisely this complex exponential. And notice here there is no frequency. It's all formulated in time. Okay. And then there is another world, which is time domain. But with discrete time, right, in which the signal is just the sequence of its values f at minus n, f at minus 1, f at 0, f at 1, f at n, and so forth. And to go from here to here, you just use a Shannon we use this kind of as a model, but we actually operate on discrete uh, samples. And these transformations are all isometries. What does it mean? So, um, so all three see if I can turn on the lights on the whiteboard. Uh, ah, that's my fact. Okay, so all uh, three spaces This means uh, that uh, scalar product in the frequency domain, uh, so f hat of omega, g hat of omega, which is equal 1 over 2 pi, integral from minus pi to pi, f hat of omega, g hat of omega conjugate, right, because they are complex value, uh, d omega is equal to the scalar product in time domain, f of t, g of t, right, um, which is just integral from minus infinity to infinity, f of t, g of t, if they are real, both signals are real, no need to, there is no complex conjugation, dt. And this in turn is equal to the sum, uh, uh, okay, so let me write it like this, uh, uh, sequence fk, uh, sequence gk, which is just sum k equals from minus infinity to infinity, f of k, g of k. Right, so scalar product of the functions of the signals represented in frequency 
is exactly the same as scalar product of two signals represented in time domain and the same as when signals are represented by uh, discrete samples. Right? So that's all. Um, and this means that the lengths of vectors are the same and that the uh, angles between the, the vectors are also the same. So, and in signal processing, we kind of keep going back and forth uh, between these three representations, but most of the time we operate on discrete samples in time domain, well, we also do it in frequency domain, so. Um, now, um, why is this so? Well, can you move on it this way? So, uh, you see, say integral from minus infinity to infinity, f of t, g of t, d, t, if we represent the signals by the Shannon sampling formula, then we get the integral from minus infinity to infinity, uh, sum k equals from minus infinity to infinity, fk time sink by t minus k times, right, g of t will be sum k equals from minus infinity to, I'm uh, sorry, not, not k, but say m. m goes from minus infinity to infinity. Uh, f of m sink by t minus m dt. And then if I put, if I exchange sums and integrals, I get that this is equal to sum over k and m going from minus infinity to infinity, f of k, g of m, integral from minus infinity to infinity, sink by t minus k times sink by t minus m dt. But remember, we said that these are also orthonormal vectors. So this is equal to uh, 1 if uh, uh, k is equal to m and 0 otherwise, right? So this means that only when k is equal to m, you will have 1. So k has to be equal to m, and you get that this is sum n equals from minus infinity to infinity, uh, f of n, g of n. So you can see now the benefit of representing things in an orthonormal base. So this is all what you need to know about signal representation. Once you represent the signals, you want to do something with them. You want to operate on signals. So uh, uh, well, kind of good deal of operators that act on signals are uh, special ones that are, called, that are called filters. What are filters? Filters are, uh, they are continuous. Um, uh, linear. and time invariant operators. In 
engineering literature, this uh, uh, continuous is kind of dropped, uh, but uh, it's uh, necessary for something to be continuous to be a filter. So let's see what this means. Uh, so one continu continuous uh, in the sense uh, of L2, right? Uh, this means that um, if uh, you have a sequence of signals fn of t uh, that is such that uh, the norm of fn of t minus uh, some another signal f of t uh, goes to zero, uh, then uh, also the norm of uh, L of f n minus L of f uh, also uh, goes to zero. Right, so if you have, so what is the, remember what the norm F2, uh, what the norm of a signal is, this is the square root of the integral from minus infinity to infinity, F of t squared dt. This is called the L2 uh, norm because we are taking we are squaring and then taking square root so this is called two norm so this is, this means that l max things that are close into things that are close it won't produce jumps it's not possible that you have a sequence of signals that converges to say this signal here but in the image uh, uh, the, this is not the case. There is a jump, for example, between what these signals, right? So it's, you can. This is kind of assumed that, that all of the operators that we consider are of this form. As, and as I say, sometimes in engineering literature, it's not even listed as a condition, right? Um, but we need it. So two, what does it mean that it is linear? It means that if you put on the, so this is your operator L that takes an input F and outputs L of F. Well, if you put a linear combination of two signals here, on the output, you should get the corresponding linear combination of the images, right? So this means that L of the signal that looks like this, alpha times f of t plus beta times g of t, then this should be alpha times L of f of t um, plus beta times L of G of T. Now notice, L, if L doesn't map, say, particular value of F at T0 into L of F at T0, uh, this is not the case. So, Input to an operator is the entire signal. Signal in its entirety, right? It's not that uh, uh, if you have a signal and you plot it in time domain, it's not that you get point by point mapping, uh, right, into another uh, signal. It is the whole signal is being mapped into another uh, signal. Of course, this for practical purposes, you cannot work like this. For example, if you want to filter a piece of music, it's not that you input the entire song, 
and only then you get the output. So there is a way to localize the actions of the signals by approximating their action. But uh, in the model, it's required that uh, uh, you map uh, the entire signal. Okay. What would be an example of a linear operator? Well, if you have um, a fancy stereo or if you have, you know, this media player, you have this, what's called graphic equalizer, right, that kind of emphasizes some frequencies and can de-emphasize some, um, some other frequencies. So, for example, my neighbor seems to like just uh, bass because all I can hear is boom, boom, boom from the other wall, right? So, if you put simultaneously two songs, if you mix two songs and put them through the equalizer, the output you will get exactly the sum of the actions of the operator on the two separate uh, sounds, right? So this is pretty uh, clear. What is time invariance? Time invariance essentially means that if you shift the input signal, the output would be appropriately shifted, right? So if I start playing a song five minutes later, you know, if I use this equalizer on a song that I delay for five minutes, uh, then the output will be also delayed for five minutes. So this would mean that L, uh, when you apply, <coughs> when you apply L, so U square brackets to indicate that this applies to the whole signal, right? L of F of T minus U, so shifted in time, right? Will be L of F shifted precisely for the same amount in, the, in time. Uh, and as I said, a great deal of signal processing is, a li is linear signal processing, namely uh, applying certain filters uh, to your input signal. So now what we want to do is we want to characterize uh, what your, how a filter acts on a signal, right? Well, what you can do is uh, you can say, okay, L of f of t, right? I can now represent f of t using the Shannon sampling formula, right? So this will be L of sum when n equals from minus infinity to infinity, f of n sync by t minus n, right? I just replaced f of t by its Shannon expansion. Right. But now, what is an infinite sum? Infinite sum is a limit, right? So this is equal to L applied to the limit of when capital N goes to infinity of the sum uh, N equals from minus capital N to N f of n sync by t minus n. Now this is where we need continuity. Action on, uh, on, uh, on the limiting point of a sequence is the limiting point of the corresponding actions. So I can, so here we can say uh, by continuity of L, 
we get that this is equal to the limit when capital N goes to infinity of uh, uh, L of, uh, sorry, of, uh, of, yes, L of uh, sum when N equals from minus N to N f of n sink pi t minus n. Right? So now, so we use the continuity. Uh, what do you think, what are we going to use now? Well, if we are representing uh, this guy is linear combination of the things. So now, by linearity, of L, this will be limit when capital N goes to infinity. And I can pass with L inside because this is a linear combination of signals. So operator applied to the linear combination of signals is linear combination of uh, uh, corresponding output. So this will be limit when n equal when n goes to infinity sum when n goes from minus n to n f of n, this is just a constant, right? L of sinc uh, pi t minus n. Right? So now, this is equal. Now, what is the limit of the sum? Well, that's just the series. Uh, so this is equal to the sum n goes from minus infinity to infinity. And then I'll have f of n. But L applied on shifted sinks is the same as L applied just to plain sink and then shifted. So this will be L applied to uh, sin uh, by u and then uh, with u replaced by uh, t minus n, right? So you see, uh, this is a little, it's an important fact, right? So in order to know what your filter will do, to any input signal whatsoever. All you have to know is what L will do to sync uh, pi Q or pi D, doesn't matter, uh, right? I just, uh, because we are shifting, we will replace U by T minus N. Um, so if I know what my operator does to the sync function, voila, I know exactly what the operator does to any signal. Now, if the operator is also band limited in the sense that it maps any signal into band limited signal, and that's a reasonable assumption because uh, operators, you know, any physical system cannot pass infinitely high frequencies, then this is equal to something that is called impulse response of the filter, right? If the filter is also band limited to bandwidth path. Um, so this will be just impulse response of uh, the filter L. Okay, so this is really, really very um, 
important feature. Image of any signal <coughs> is completely determined by what uh, the filter does to the uh, sync function. Okay, well, this is an important quantity, so let me know. So this will be time domain uh, representation of the filter in a sense, right? So, uh, so this is just a signal. L of sync pi of u is just a signal, right? Time domain signal, which is band limited signal of finite energy, because we are assuming that L max L2 into L2. So there are actually, as you can see, um, other implicit assumptions uh, that uh, they are kind of uh, usually all is swept under the rag in signal processing books. But uh, uh, so uh, L of uh, the signal. Let's write a bit with d pi d. Let's call this a signal L of d, the impulse response. And let's assume that it also belongs to b L pi. That the, any function of finite energy will be mapped into a band-limited function also of finite energy. Then it has its Fourier transform. Sorry, say it again. Sync. Oh, yeah, 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 thank you. Sync uh, by D. Right, so it has Fourier uh, uh, representation. By the way, and of course, this is absolutely never ever mentioned in uh, signal processing books. It is actually not true that uh, this integral, which we call Fourier transform, Right, uh, integral from minus infinity to infinity, f of t e to the minus i omega t dt, that this integral converges, unfortunately. If, uh, so this converges, if actually something stronger holds, if integral from minus infinity to infinity, absolute value of t, dt converges, then this guy exists honest to God. In order to get Fourier transform of any L2 signal, which is these signals that we are interested when we do signal processing, strictly speaking, you have to represent, and this is true, any signal in L2 can be represented as a limit of signals in L1. And then this integral is actually, you just define it to be the limit of Fourier transforms of these guys. So if you want to do everything honestly, there is actually a remarkably lot of work uh, to be done but uh, usually, but the rule of thumb is you can pretend that these improper integrals really exist in the standard sense, even though they might not. And if you just calculate uh, as formally with these integrals, uh, then nothing bad happens, uh, right? But in principle, this is not always the case. Okay, so we will assume here that L of t belongs to, pi, uh, to band limited signals of finite energy. Uh, so it has a Fourier transform. So let's call it L hat of omega. So what is L hat of omega? That's integral from minus infinity to infinity, L of t. Uh, e to the 
uh, minus i omega t dt. So we now want to see how is the Fourier transform of f and the Fourier transform of L of f, then how are these objects uh, related? Let me see, did I tell you everything I was supposed to tell you? Okay, so um, how do we uh, do that? Well, we use the very fact that f of t can be decomposed by Shannon sampling formula as the sum from minus infinity to infinity f of n sinc by t minus n. So this is uh, so this means that L of f of t, as we saw, is equal to the sum in equals from minus infinity to infinity f of m L of sinc by t minus n which is equal to the sum n equals from minus infinity to infinity uh, f of n L of just sinc sinc by t and then evaluated so t is replaced by t minus n right but we know what this is this is the impulse response. This is L of t. And this L of t, we represented 